Love it. And again, taking that data, data readiness. And that is all what customers and organizations are looking for. They're looking to be ready because if exactly. they're ready, they're going to be more successful. I totally agree. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, and you know, Steve, I know we're coming up to the time. I got, I got to wrap up here. But one of the things I, I do want to ask in closing, as you mentioned, is from your time and seeing the evolution, right? As customers mm -hmm. are trying to be more ready, right, with their data. Where do you see us evolving? Where do you see us going? Where do you see organizations going now? Whether them being more proactive, whether them being more reactive because of compliance, where do they and where do they need to go to really be data driven? To be one of those top companies to say, I I know my data, I own my data. We're a data driven company today. Uh, well, that's a great question. Um, because <laughs> I wish I knew. Uh, I would say, for, for, well, if you look at all the industry analysts, and that's, you know, the gurus, they've been trying to tell us now for a while that it's every company uh, will have, it's a data catalog. It's not if, it's when. If you don't, you won't. It's like having your air turned on. If you don't have air turned on, you're going to drown. And they've said the same thing about having a data catalog of some sort. Right? So data catalogs are no longer a luxury, they're a necessity. And I've gone from having to, you know, back in the day, a lot of my job was to, you know, try to uncover use cases and selling why you need the data catalog. That, those days are done. I mean, a lot of the things where we talk about, folks don't need to hear that anymore. I think they understand the why. And the ones that don't are going to struggle. They should be telling us. I mean, honestly, like you said, I need to be ready for this project because I need to find trust and use my data, whatever they use. Those are the ones that are going to be successful. Um, they, they, they understand that it's a necessity. So data catalog and data governance um, is going to be more built in to data management platforms. You even see it today. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of the cloud, a lot of the cloud vendors are including data, data inventories for free, right? As part, as a component, it's, it's, it's a necessity. You need to be, that metadata needs to be there. So a lot of these companies, they've understood that a, some sort of catalog or index of data, right? Is necessary. The ones that take it a step further are the ones that are gonna understand that the governance and the inventory and the catalog need to be taken to the business level, the business outcome. So it's the folks that grasp enterprise glossaries, the ones that grasp enterprise lineage, the ones that grasp these processes, those are the ones I think that are going to be successful. And those companies that embrace that technology as a unified platform will be successful. Um, uh, the last thing I'll say is there is a, there's a trend now where standalone data catalogs are starting to, you'll, you're seeing the demand go down where in, integrated data catalogs now or, or the next new thing, like IBM and Informatica and us, we have our own catalog as part of a solution, as part of a platform, and not just a plug and play catalog. Um, you're gonna see that more and more as more companies and more, uh, and more platforms are integrated together so that it's more seamless and it's more, it's part of the DNA, right? So data governance is gonna be a part of the DNA of every platform solution, not just be an add-in. That's where I see I see that. And obviously I didn't even use the cloud, the word cloud, and it's been an hour. So I, I'm, before I get, <laughs> before I get reprimanded <laughs> by the buzzword police, I'm going to use the word cloud here. So as more and more companies, everybody's moving, as they move to the cloud, you're going to see a, a reliance and a dependence on, on a catalog first approach of data readiness be prior to that migration from lineage companies who are now you're seeing, you're seeing companies pop up that just do nothing but lineage, right? Because that's the most important thing is figuring out what you have to move and what everything that relates to that move. So the future will be as more and more enterprises move to the cloud, will they be ready, right? Will they be ready to make that move? And will that move be financially, uh, will they be rewarded financially? by making that move, by doing it right, rather than just moving your old crap in the garage to a brand new house with a nice clean garage, but you have the same crap in it. So that's how they're gonna, that's how these companies are gonna be successful in my mind. So the ones that have a, a catalog first approach, 
uh, that they are re data ready and that do everything they do is to find trust and use their data. Those are the ones that are going to be successful in, in, a, in, a, in a consolidated, integrated platform. So that's, that's my view. I couldn't have said it better than you, Steve. Like you said, <laughs> again, taking those valid points, four major points, right, is find trust and use and, and readiness, right? right? And how to do that? The catalog, the thumbs up. The That's catalog right. is going to help that, that unified catalog, right? And we're very fortunate to work with a great company like Talent to show that value with the unified um, platform within that catalog. But I, I totally agree. I think that is where we're heading. That's where we're seeing today. Our customers are asking for that. Our organizations are asking for that. And that's gonna really make them successful and data-driven. So Absolutely. really appreciate those insights, Steve. Yep, you got it. All right. Well, Steve, I wanna thank you for taking the time and joining me on Talking Data and More. Really appreciate your insights today. And like I said, rock on, man. Weird Al, I never knew that. That's awesome. Weird Al, yeah. Weird Al, and like, yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a great show. I, I, I got to play with Weird Al. I got to play two songs with, it was for a benefit. It was a benefit we did for a, an organization called Sweet Relief Musician. Sweet Musicians Relief, right? So if you ever, you know, if you're online, look at they're a great organization. They help out musicians in need uh, when they have medical bills or, or, or hospital bills, this, this, this organization. So we did a, a, um, a, an event called Strange, uh, Strange 80s. And it was, um, so what the premise was, it was, it was hosted by Finn Wolford from Stranger Things. Okay. So, you know, yeah. right? So I got to meet him and we hung out and played with him, you know, together. And, and it was, it was, it was very cool. So he was the, he was the host and it was, the premise was all um, uh, 1980s theme. So, cause it was nice. Stranger Things, 80s, yep. but with other, uh, all these different artists singing and performing 80s songs. Right. Nice. So Jack Black, Jack Black was there with, you know, so Sarah Silver, Silverstein um, doing, they did, they did a little show doing some 80s songs. So all, every one of us did a certain thing, but I was in the house band that played with some of that uh, other acts. So when we did, so like Weird Al, I got to play, I don't know if you know Devo, right? So we yeah. played, we played, yeah, man, we played Girl You Want. <laughs> yeah. And we played Jenny, 8675309. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And, and you can go Google it and find it. So I got to play that. And then I got to play, um, I got to play with Jane Whedon from the Go-Go's. We got to play a couple. Ooh. We got the beat and our lips are sealed with Jane Whedon. That was fun. Um, wow. I, again, so that was all for that. And uh, it was great. I got to, like I said, play with Toby Keith uh, for a chair. Nice. Play next to him. Another, I got some stories for that, which are great. Um, and then Michael Anthony's wedding, man, it was, we've, and we've done a couple of, uh, uh, fundraisers for Michael Anthony's, um, uh, uh, children, heart, children with heart disease fundraisers. Mm. And I got to play with him and he's, he's a great guy. Great guy. Awesome. Great guy. So yeah, I got, I got yes. some fun. That's great. Steve. Like I said, true yeah. rock star, to the heart, not only as a musician, <laughs> but also to the data extraordinaire. Thanks so much, Steve. Really you appreciate it. it. All right, man. Take care, everyone. See you. Thanks.